Hi everyone, welcome. Happy New Year. This is Seek Sustainable Japan. I'm JJ Walsh and today we are talking about the EV market in 2023. How is it looking at this point at the beginning of the year and how things might be changing. Um, there's a quote by basketball coach Pat Riley. Look for your choices, pick the best one, then go for it. And I think in、uh, talking about sustainability, we often try to have the same motto. We try to choose the best from what's available,、uh, what options we have. And I think when we're talking about EVs in Japan, we have to kind of keep this in mind because we don't have. The same EV market as other countries around the world do.、Uh, we're kind of limited.、Uh, as a Tesla owner, <laughs> I talked more about my reasons for choosing a Tesla, and I really think Tesla might still be one of the better choices. Uh, for the EV market in Japan. I think、uh, there are some hints at new entries and new changes in the market.、Um, so, why electric in general? Let's start with the facts.、Uh, the facts are pretty clear. If you're buying a new car, the more sustainable choice is an all electric EV、um, for loads of reasons. Here are three good ones、uh, no emissions, which is better for people, planet, and profit. As it creates less air, land, and water pollution, which then improves the quality of our environment, which then improves the quality of our vital resources, air, food, and water, and then positively impacts the health of animals, including us. A healthy workforce then follows,、uh, which connects to a stronger economy. Uh, number two, as the grid includes more renewables, electric cars have less environmental impact than gas powered cars or even hybrid cars, which use some gas. Charging from 100% renewable sources, of course, is ideal, but even the normal grid makeup is better than 100% fossil fuels at the pump. Uh, in Japan, the energy mix at the moment. So it has changed over time.、Uh, Japan、uh, in the 1973 dependency on fossil fuels was 94%, in 2010 was 81.2%, and in 2019 was 84.8%. The big change you'll see there is renewable energy has increased a little bit. Uh, nuclear power has gone down.、Um, unfortunately, coal use has gone up in the last nine years.、Uh, we have good targets in Japan for 2030 and 2050,、uh, which increases the amount of renewable energy. So, this is from METI,、uh, Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, the Agency for Natural Resources and Energy, is the official title. Uh, often called METI for short.、Uh, what are the sources of energy Japan depends on? Japan is largely dependent on oil, coal, natural gas, and other fossil fuels imported from outside Japan. Following the Great East Japan earthquake, the degree of dependence on fossil fuels increased to 84.8% in fiscal year 2019 in Japan. Um, so, even using the normal grid, even not using 100% renewables,、uh, you are still using more renewables and more sustainable energy than just getting gas, 100% fossil fuel at the pump. Here's a quote from earthjustice.org Electric vehicles have a smaller carbon footprint. Than gasoline powered cars, no matter where your electricity comes from.、Sorry. And number three, it's the future of transportation.、Uh, buses, trains, cars, and even ferries and airplanes are really moving in this direction toward an all electric, emission free vehicle. And、uh, we are seeing the charging infrastructure around the world, including Japan, is really improving every year. 
And now I drive a Model 3 Tesla. And I have to admit that, yes, I'm a bit less than proud recently of the brand uh, due to the crazy antics of the company CEO. But in Japan, Tesla is really still one of the best options we have. In 2019, I was an early adopter who invested in a Model 3. After spending a year researching and test driving other EVs available in Japan, and the market really hasn't developed too much since then. Uh, I have a video uh, where I talk about the Model 3 and why I chose it and how to use it and some of the things I was surprised about uh, when I first got it, which I'll link below. Uh, the Model 3 was really the standout in 2019 as the only other full electric vehicle available in Japan at the time was the Nissan LEAF. And the LEAF range was not as good for the price and nowhere near the drivability of the Model 3. I remember getting in uh, the test drive at the Tesla dealership in Tokyo in a really cool area of uh, Shibuya, I believe. And I was doing the test drive and next to me was an Alfa Romeo. The other side was a Porsche. And uh, I just felt like it could keep up. Like it was just such a great car to drive and it looks cool. And uh, the price was good and the range is good and it's got a good charging network. So it really sold me on many different levels. If the Japan government sticks to its 2030 targets, there are only seven more years for all car companies in Japan to change to hybrids and EVs. The rule is by 2030, no all gas cars can be sold. I've listed the currently available models by price and range they can travel on a single charge below. Each of the hyperlinks I'll put below takes you to the most clear Japanese EV product website pages that I could find. Please let me know of any others you see on the road or online because this is definitely not an exhaustive list and I'm always searching for more information. Now, there are only five EV brands um, that seem to be available in Japan right now at the start of 2023. Now, according to Nissan's official website, which I've linked here, they have five EV models, which range from the 350 to 400 kilometer range for four to 4.7 million. So not a bad range, a little bit on the low side, but the price is also pretty good compared to uh, the others. It's the cheapest in the market at the moment. Now, the next one is the Honda E. The Honda E has a range of 250 kilometers per charge, and it's on sale now for 4.9 million. So the range is a little bit short for the price. Uh, it's less range than the Leaf, but the price is higher than the Leaf. So I think that's been one of the challenges in uh, getting kind of customer loyalty. Although a lot of people love the Honda brand, I myself was a proud Honda owner before, um, family business turned big international brand. So it has a good reputation in Japan. I'm cheering for it, hoping to see more EVs coming from Honda. Now the number three is the Tesla Model 3s available. Now you have a range of the new Model 3s and it looks like from the Tesla website, uh, the lowest level range is 565 kilometers for 5.3 million. Now, when I got the lowest level range uh, in 2019 Model 3, I got just under 400 kilometers. So really, they have improved the range a great deal. And the price is about the same as I paid three years ago. So that's pretty impressive. And then the higher level Model 3 it gets a range of 689 kilometers. So that seems very specific. 
um, for $6.4 million. Uh, the next on the list is also Tesla. Tesla has two Model Ys available with a range from 507 kilometers for 5.8 million to a high performance 595 kilometer range for 7.5 million. The next on the list is Subaru's Solterra, which has a 480 kilometer range on sale for 6.8 million yen. The Jaguar I-Pace, which my friend Kevin has, has a range of 438 kilometers and it's on sale for 10 million. And he bought actually a secondhand model or showroom model and he got a great deal on that. So it's always worth uh, checking uh, used models or uh, discount models so you can get some great deals. Now let's talk a little bit about hybrids and plug-in hybrids which are available in Japan. Um, so if you really are not sure about going all in with all electrics, maybe you feel a little bit uneasy about uh, whether you're going to be able to charge um, if you're driving more remotely, for example. So uh, the hybrid and plug-in hybrid market in Japan is very strong, and that's because Toyota, that's Toyota's wheelhouse, right? Now, Toyota claims that this is the year that they will launch the all-electric 2023 BZ4X in the U.S. They do lease out the BZ4X in Japan in certain areas for 100,000 yen a month. They started it in 2022, but had a recall and will launch again. According to the Japan Times, December 2nd, 2022, Japanese automakers have recently been criticized by activists and green investors who slam them for not embracing battery electric vehicles fast enough. Toyota Motor began selling its first mass-produced fully electric vehicle, the BZ4X, in May, at least only in its domestic market, charging 106,700 yen per month for the first four years in a 10-year contract. However, it was forced to recall less than two months later due to safety concerns. It began producing again in October of 2022. Just a year into its 38 billion EV plan, Toyota is already considering starting again to better compete in a market growing beyond the automaker's projections as it was recorded in October. Now, BMW is another uh, brand in Japan, uh, which only has a range of plug-in hybrids. Now, I thought it was an EV line that they had, but when I talked to an owner recently, she said it's plug-in, so it uses gas as well. Um, but their plug-in hybrid range uh, starts from 7 million yen and goes up. Now, the benefit of a hybrid versus plug-in hybrid, the plug-in hybrid has a longer electric range, so you would use less gas, more electricity, which has no emissions, which is better. According to the BMW Japan website, they do have an EV, an all-electric, called the BMW iX which goes for 10.7 million and has a range of 650 kilometers. Um, the up and coming EV news for Japan. I found some interesting articles. For example, Subaru is planning to build an EV only manufacturing facility in Japan by 2027. So they already started in 2022. Uh, the car maker now uses Toyota's facilities to make the Solterra EV, which is Subaru's only EV. Chinese made BYD is set to enter the market in 2023 as well, with electric buses and cars that have a range above 450 kilometers for a modest 4.5 million. So this really could be a game changer uh, that we might see this year in 2023 as BYD, a new player, in the EV market in Japan uh, enters. And we'll see if it can disrupt the market and create a bit of competition. It would be great to see more EVs around. The more, the better. 
Uh, Toyota is also playing catch up to follow Tesla's lead, according to Japan Times. It's not common knowledge, but Tesla and Toyota actually collaborated in 2012 on an EV version of the RAV4, it's like an SUV type,、uh, which was unfortunately discontinued in 2014. Uh, Toyota had stock in Tesla that it sold in 2017, as it didn't see much potential for the company. But now Toyota's Shigeki Tedashi is leading a business revolution with a new EV development team. Now, according to this Japan Times article, which I found October 24th, 2022, Tedashi's team has been designated a BR. Or business revolution group within Toyota, a term used for major changes, including a revamp of its development and production processes two decades ago. Like our solar panels, our electric car has been a great investment that has really saved our family a lot of money and time over these last three years. As my car payments end in a couple of years, it will also have the added value of driving a great zero emission car for free. I'm focused on sustainability for my work, travel, and life. So, an electric car is an important investment for me that really fits the way I want to live my life. In current terms of cost, we paid $3 million for a three kilowatt solar system 10 years ago. And just ending the payments right now. So it's going to be free from here on out, which is really awesome.、Um, but it's amazing to look at the prices and the efficiencies have significantly improved since we bought our solar system for our house. You can now get twice the system we have for the same price. So you can get, instead of a three kilowatt system, you can get like a six kilowatt system for three million yen or less. But even for us, it has helped reduce our costs as well as our footprint. Now, the Japanese government, when we first started、uh, with our solar panels,、uh, the Japanese government had a FIT system, feed in tariff system, which paid you back、um, more than twice as much as we paid for electricity that was sold from our panels to the grid. Unfortunately, there's no FIT system after the 10 year. Uh, time period.、Um, but even without using it, even the normal, we're using some of the energy that we make. I charge my car during the day, so I'm using my solar energy that I'm making. So it's like charging for free and it's charging clean on renewable energy.、Um, but even if we just think about what we're buying from the grid, we were before solar paying. In the winter months, like now, we were paying about 40,000 yen a month for our family.、Uh, we use a lot more energy during the winter to heat the house. And now we're paying like 20,000. So it's about half savings because we're supplying some of our own energy during the day when we're up and at work and doing things and using the energy. So it makes a lot of sense for us. So, Also, investing in an EV has really、uh, paid off,、uh, not just for cost, but also for a lot of time saving, which I was really surprised about. So, the Tesla Model 3 has improved in efficiency since I bought mine in 2019,、um, but it's really for about the same price, 5 million yen. And the drivers can still qualify, as far as I know, for national government rebates of about 500,000 back、uh, when you buy an electric vehicle in Japan.、Uh, let me know if I'm out of date on that, but as far as I know,、uh, that's still true.、Um, I bought a home charging system with the Tesla、uh, for about 20,000 yen so that I charge it during the day. And I always keep it about 80, 90% charged. And、uh, so I only have to charge once a week, usually, even if I'm driving every day. And、uh, it's just really convenient and easy. It's always charged when I'm ready to go.、Uh, only when I do long trips, I have to use the charging infrastructure, and then you have to wait 
40 minutes for a full charge, but it's not so bad. Uh, with the app for the Tesla, and I think a, a lot of new cars, uh, you can communicate with the car via app. So I know uh, how much the car is charged. I can heat up or cool down the car before I get in. I can lock it, unlock it from the app. It's like driving a computer, really. It's really interesting. Uh, this also saves me a lot of time, energy, and hassle as I only have to seek out chargers if I'm doing long trips. Uh, whereas before, with a gas car, I'd have to still go to the gas station, even if I was just doing trips around the city, because I didn't have a gas station at my house. <laughs> Uh, with a fuel-efficient K car, which I had before, I drove that for more than 10 years uh, before I had an EV as uh, just a convenient size and very economical. Um, but I had to fill it up twice a month at least for about 4,000 yen each time. So there's 8,000 yen a month or 60,000 yen a year just on fuel. And that's a car that struggled to go faster than 80 kilometers per hour. Um, very different from driving a Tesla, where some, it seems like you're not even working it hard at 100 kilometers an hour. It's amazing. Um, it would cost significantly more to fill up on gas these days, but also have significant environmental and social costs, the people planet. Uh, part of the equation is definitely a uh, great emotional and mental savings as well. Uh, so I was doing a bit of calculation, how many times I charged in 2022. I used the charging network 24 times. So most of the time I was charging at home. I used it 24 times when I was on the go uh, for a total price of 29,000. 27 yen. Uh, if I did 24 fill ups at a gas station, which I guess is almost exactly twice a month, isn't it? At 4,000 yen a time, that would be almost 100,000, so 96,000 yen. Cost savings of 66,973 yen. Hey, that's a, that's a new phone. That's a nice, that's a decent camera right? I mean, significant, I would say. Plus, you have the added environmental and social benefits. Um, so when I traveled to Hawaii last summer, I was also really happy to see Hawaiian Electric uh, is really setting up great EV charging infrastructure there. A lot more people are using EVs. So I would say that's a, another reason to think about uh, your next car as an EV or changing from a gas car to an EV now because the infrastructure is growing everywhere. It's really a growing trend uh, in Japan and all over the world. Now we're going to start seeing rent-a-cars, which are EVs as well, I think. Now, Tesla uh, Model 3 charging stats for me for 2022. I charged our EV mostly for free at home. Uh, apparently, according to my app, that was 61%. And I used the charging network 39% of the time and spent a total of 29,027 yen, according to my charging history. And here is my Tesla app stats for 2022. It's kind of weird that it, it changed it into dollars. I think that's because I have my app in English to make it easier to read. Look at the, the amounts here, even though it's in dollars. Uh, from February 2022 to January 2023, I charged 2,713 kilowatts. I spent $708, charged at home 61% of the time, uh, out at superchargers 39% of the time. My gas savings were $936. So I spent $708 in charging, but a gas equivalent would have been $1,644. Now some people would say, why not give up on the car completely? Isn't that more sustainable? And I do think about giving up on our car a lot, but until we live in a bigger city or I don't need to travel so much for work or we don't want 
to travel so much uh, as a family for leisure time, uh, places where there isn't really the transportation infrastructure and there's no sharing network for uh, more sustainable transportation, like sharing EV cars. I think that's coming in the future. Um, it just makes more sense. Now we have two drivers. My son's a new driver. His first car is electric. How cool is that? Um, now we have two drivers sharing the EV and it enhances the quality of our lives and work as well as saves us money and hassle. And a lot of his friends see him driving an EV and it's kind of introducing that possibility to more drivers, younger drivers as well, which is cool. Now we live in Hiroshima, Japan, and it's a medium sized city of a million people uh, with decent city center transportation that's really walkable and cyclable, but much less efficient outside the city center. My sustainable tourism, marketing, consulting, and education work requires a lot of travel into smaller cities and rural areas of Japan where tr public transportation really just doesn't exist. Or if it exists, it takes too long or it's more too expensive to use. I appreciate that Tesla has a good presence here in Japan and it offers a good charging and maintenance network across the country. Overall, it has a high performance, sustainable car I can depend on. I uh, recently did my Shaken. That's a uh, car maintenance tax road safety check that you have to do every couple years, three years if it's a new car. And uh, they have a new uh, maintenance office in Hiroshima. So that was great. I didn't have to drive all the way to Osaka. Uh, when I bought the car in 2019, I had to drive it from Osaka because that was the nearest dealership. So even for Tesla, they're really expanding not only the charging network, but also the maintenance and dealerships are also expanding. Now, uh, in terms of charging infrastructure, a lot of EV drivers in Japan really rely on the Elephant charging network, but I haven't bought the 4,000 yen a month membership. Uh, in the three years of using the Tesla home charging, using the Tesla charging network, or sometimes using the Eon Mall pay-as-you-go chargers, that's been enough. And it would provide peace of mind, but it's just not worth that 4,000 yen a month if uh, I can usually do home charging and home charging on a sunny day. It's clean, renewable energy from my solar panels, which is a, a great um, mental, emotional positive as well. Thanks so much for joining, guys. Have a great day. See you next time. Let's try it again. Hold on. <coughs> Let's try it again. Oh, what's wrong with me? Let me go.